Okay, we're here in Kansas. We're at Stratica, which is an underground salt mine. We're about to head 650 feet underground. Let's go. We are on the way. Okay, we're just in the foyer here at the moment, um, waiting for our tour. Uh, there's so much stuff in here, you could probably spend at least 15 minutes just reading everything that's just in the foyer as you're waiting for your tour to start. We're about to get into the lift, go down the 650 feet. Here we are, we've arrived in the mine. The entry hall behind me takes about 30 minutes to get through if you read all of the displays and panels and look at everything. Um, Janie's still back there, still reading. Um, and we're about to head off into the second section of the mine. This uh, block of, I was going to say ice, <laughs> this block of salt behind me is 6,000 6, pounds in weight. So this is some of the old mining equipment that was actually used. Interesting thing about the mine that we're in at the moment, although this part of the mine is a museum, the mine is still active and there are half a dozen employees still extracting half a million tonnes of salt per year. The walls are lined up with um, red lines to mark the placement of the explosives. As the rail system has no longer been operational in the mine, the miners took to cutting apart cars and bringing them down through the um, mine shaft and then welding them back together and converting them to diesel. Um, and this one was found in the back part of the mine and um, was brought to the museum after it had been abandoned. Not only old cars, but old tractors end up in the salt mines. This was an electric loader. It ran on a 483 phase voltage um, and had this gigantic long cable here, which was 350 feet long, um, which plugged into the power supply. This is one of the first diesel machines that was used to load the salt and in front of it is the conveyor so the salt runs across the top layer and then the return belt is underneath. This area here is the dark ride area and it was mined in the 1940s. The size of pillars that they were using in the 1940s were these 40 foot thick pillars but with 40 feet in between. It's what's called the room and pillar style of mining. Uh, you'd blast into a room and use the pillars to help support the roof. If you were to cut the top of the mine off in these room and pillar areas, it'd basically look like a giant waffle iron if you're looking at it from above. So we have an interactive part of the ride coming up here. If you'll just pass this white curtain behind you as we go through. <laughs> These are what are called stress attractors right here. When we went through that curtain earlier, we transitioned from the 1940s to the 1950s, and they changed the pillar size slightly. They weren't exactly sure what that size of pillar change was going to do, so they added in these stress attractors here to help take the pressure off the pillars further ahead of us. What is happening here with these stress attractors, you can think of it kind of like you're playing a game of Jenga. You can knock the middle block out and everything on the side still holds everything up. So these stress attractors are holding the roof above us up. What is happening slowly over time, the roof is putting more and more pressure on these pillars here, and the pillars are starting to push into the floor slowly. Uh, eventually they hit a point that they can't push any further, and then the salt starts to spill up on the sides and you get floor heaves. This right here is a floor heave. That crack that we're parked on is a floor heave as well. So you can think of these floor heaves. Uh, another good example is like, um, you're sticking your thumb into a jar of Play-Doh or modeling clay, and it heaves up around your thumb. That is basically what's happening there with those floor heaves. So what a lot of our salt was used for was cattle licks. We'd sell big blocks of salt to ranchers. They'd go out and drop it off in their fields and the cattle would lick at the salt and get nutrients from it. The problem is the cattle were pretty picky and they didn't like the taste of certain types of salt. And that is the salt that you'll see in this pile off to it right here. So you've got some very muddy, um, dark salt in there. They didn't like the taste of that. 
and also some salt with some red in it. That has a very bitter taste to it. Didn't like the taste of that either. So this salt wouldn't sell. They would try to mine around it when possible, but sometimes it was unavoidable and uh, they would just leave it down here in large trash piles like this. If you shine your lights all the way in the back, you'll notice some much larger pieces of salt back here. This is what's called a roof ball. So the pieces of salt here used to be part of the roof and then they fell roughly about 70 years ago. This is a very extensive roof ball. It's about 100 feet deep and then 500 feet wide. So as we head all down this hallway, you'll see that roof ball following us along. Off to the left here, you can see lots and lots of those 50 pound dynamite boxes. This is an old powder magazine. So that red explosives cart would travel down the rail bed here and then stop at the powder magazine. The miner in charge of all the blasting was called the powderman. You can see when the powderman first started working for the mine, he was nice and organized, stacked the boxes up very neatly. And then after a while, he stopped caring as much, just tossed the boxes over his shoulder. He was pretty smart. Before World War II, they used to use wooden boxes of dynamite. He used those old wooden boxes to make a little stool for himself, and then some shelving that would hold the dynamite while he worked. How does the, um, the raw salt look like? So the road salt, um, so you'll actually grind the salt that comes off of the blast uh, down to really small chunks. So if you look kind of on the floor, like the size of some of these and even smaller, uh, that is what your uh, road salt will look like. Very, very small pieces of salt. So it's ground down quite a bit from the large rock salt that comes off of the glass. Now, just a little bit ago, we talked about the rail bed. The museum stripped up that old rail bed and built a new one. That's the same thing that the miners would do back in the day to save money. They would strip up old rail beds when they were done with them and move them to wherever they needed the new rail bed to be. It was very cost effective to do it that way. You didn't have to purchase new ties and tracks as often. And you didn't have to use the hoist to bring them underground. Remember, salt production would have to stop if you brought these underground and you'd lose out on a lot of money. So they tried to reuse what they had as much as possible. Because of that, it's pretty rare to find a rail bed like we have here, almost fully intact. You can see all of the oak ties left behind and even some track down off to the right there. They were using electric locomotives. You can see the VC power cabling they would connect to that locomotive and give it its power. So you could reuse each one of those oak ties up to four times. You would flip them a quarter turn, drive a spike through them, and then you have a brand new tie. If they ever split or crack, you'd just toss them off to the side, like this one here. No point in taking it up out of the mine to throw it away, but you can just toss it off to the side and you have unlimited amounts of storage space down here, essentially. How many tunnels are there? How many tunnels are there first? Uh, there's roughly about 200 miles of tunnels if you were to walk every single tunnel down here. Some of these tunnels, you shine a torch off and there's no end. Um, so on the dark red, they'll go a little bit more into this, but the Atomic Energy Commission came down here back in 1958 uh, and they were wanting to use salt mines as a place to store atomic waste um, because the salt would absorb the heat that came off of the waste and uh, actually the mine slowly closes in on itself about an inch every 100 years but it would slowly seal that waste away and be a safe way to store it uh, and they'll talk a little bit more about that but uh, they never stored any waste down here in this mine so you don't have to worry so on these dynamite boxes off to the right here, there's that uh, mason jar. Does anyone have any guesses on what was stored in that mason jar? No one has ever gotten this right, so we'll see if any of you are the first. A spittoon. Not a spittoon, not moonshine either. That is a very popular guess. I don't think alcohol and explosives would be a good mix. Is it, is it the purest salt that you can find down here are what are called crystal pods, and usually they're very small, pretty rare to find. We have a very large crystal pod off to our right here, kind of in the shape of a submarine. Okay, so just so uh, you're aware, unfortunately this space is so extensive, um, my batteries completely died on the, on the GoPro, so um, sorry about that.
but you just have to buy a ticket and come to Kansas and go down here and have a look yourself. Indoor plumbing. Okay, about to start on the third ride, which is a dark ride. Okay, guys, Janie and I, we've been in the um, the salt mine in Kansas, um, outside Hutchinson, I think it is. Uh, for three and a half hours now, we're still not finished. We've gone on three rides throughout the uh, inside part of the mine. Um, this place is absolutely fantastic. If you get an opportunity, do come down, do have a look at this. Um, it's well worth it. Um, and go on all three rides, not just the two rides. Do the, all three rides. Okay, guys, thanks for watching. See you next time.